Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for tuning into my channel. It means the world to me. Today we have Dior's Oud Ispahan. Now a lot of people in the community are not a stranger to this fragrance. It does get a lot of hype. A lot of people talk about it and for very good reason. I'm actually doing this video. It's a response to my good friend Julian over at the channel Notes Punch. So if you haven't checked them out yet, I highly recommend you do. I am gonna leave his information down below. And what he's doing for the month of February is his uh, February rose segment. So every single day he's trying to wear a different rose-based fragrance. So I figured I would contribute to it. So here it is, arguably one of my favorite rose-based fragrances and what I would consider to be one of the best rose-based fragrances on the market. Now I'm a huge fan of Christian Dior and that's because I'm a huge fran fan of Francois de Machy. Uh, he is the in-house perfumer, has done a lot of fragrances. Even a lot of the fragrances that were previously released, he has reformulated them and sort of added his own touch to it. This one in particular uh, is part of the Privé line. So the ones that you see here, it's the more higher end line. They're a bit more expensive than the ones that you see in Macy's and Sephora. And we'll get into a little bit of that later on, but this one, 2012 release, it's classified as a uh, floriental, a floral oriental. And let's go ahead and start things off by taking a look at the presentation. So here's the cylindrical container that it comes in. It has the CD Christian Dior logo embossed at the top. Uh, the bottle rests very nicely in there. It's kind of like a foam padding on the inside. Sticker at the bottom with your information. And this is the big size, the 8.4 fluid ounce. Here's the bottle. Same logo here at the top. You have the CD logo engraved, and I believe it's also on the inside of the cap. You can see it there, right? Kind of. It is also on the inside, it says CD. Magnetic cap, wonderful, I love that, right? You never have to worry about it falling into place. It always kind of does that on its own. Nothing at the bottom, and I'll show you the sprayer here. It's very nice. Had to recharge it. You also have CD engraved into the top of the atomizer. And that was the presentation for Udis Bahan by Christian Dior. I wanna start off by saying that this is a very romantic fragrance. This is the kind of fragrance that you would wear on a date. This is the kind of fragrance that you would wear, not just in the comfort of your own home, but when you're snuggled up next to that person that you really love, the person that you really care about. I mean, when you think of notes like labdanum, which is a very sweet resin, you think of rose, which is very sensual, and it has a lot of history too. Notes like that are evocative of more romantic scenarios. So it goes without saying that this fragrance is inherently romantic. It's very sensual, it's provocative, it's powerful. What I love about it is that it's contrasting as well. Now, I don't mean that in the sense of it does anything different because if you've smelled any Middle Eastern fragrance, well, not any, but a lot of them do this rose and oud combo. This fragrance does the same thing, but it doesn't smell like a Montau. It, it's not so generic, and I don't mean generic because I don't think a combination of oud and rose and perfume is generic to say the least, but it doesn't fall within that trend of fragrances that we've come to expect when we look at the note breakdown and we see, oh, it contains rose, oh, it contains agarwood. It does things differently. What it is, it, it starts off kind of floral, right? So if you're not into floral fragrances, I know a lot of men over in the Middle East, they wear rose all the time, but if you're not into floral fragrances, this is one that I would highly caution you to sample before you buy. Starts off with this really sensual, really deep rose note and it, it's jam-packed and uh, it doesn't smell like rose water. It's not transparent, it's not aqueous because in the fragrance you have a lot of dimension. You have the agarwood note, you have a patchouli note, you have a sandalwood note, which adds a sort of creamy sweetness in the base. You also have this note of agarwood and what the agarwood note does is it contributes to the sensual component of it, but it also makes it smell a bit more exclusive, a bit more refined, a bit more exotic. I'm gonna use the word exotic because I think that word would dis describe this perfectly. This is the type of fragrance that I wear when I really wanna make a statement. This is the type of fragrance that I wear when I'm feeling a bit bold or adventurous or courageous where I'll go out there and I know whatever it is I'm gonna do on that particular day, I am going to dominate it. I mean, this fragrance is not for the faint of heart, you know? It's not your happy-go-lucky, cologne type of a scent with a citrus overtone, citrus midtone, citrus undertone, you know? And you're like, man, I feel great wearing it. And I love those fragrances too. 
but there's a time and place, you know? I remember wearing this, uh, I went to a wedding and uh, I didn't, I had a white shirt, I believe, but I had a red tie and I layered it with Aventus, one of the few times that I ever layer fragrances and it worked so beautifully. It was so mesmerizing and enchanting. And I think it's a really powerful scent. If you do have the opportunity to sample it, um, I know with splitters and the increasing availability of people being able to get their hands off of a small portion, I think you guys should capitalize on that. I think you should take advantage. And I think if you um, are going to sample any fragrance from the Dior Privé house, this is one that is definitely high up on my list. So um, I like this one. Listen, I'm just gonna be honest, in the interest of full disclosure, my wife doesn't like this one. So if you are wearing fragrances because you wanna get complimented, and I think that's a valid reason to wear fragrances, of course, this is not the one, you know? Unless, you know, it takes a very special kind of person to be able to pull it off. But I think you would have a lot more luck if you wear an aquatic fragrance, something a bit sweeter, you know? And it has a labdanum in here, so it is sweet inherently, but I would go for like a citrusy fragrance or an aquatic or something a bit more on the gourmand side. But nonetheless, I want us to finish things off by taking a look at my rating. First up, I took a look at the uniqueness and the overall smell, and this is certainly a unique fragrance. Whenever you see the name Francois de Machy, you can guarantee it's gonna be unique. Even something like Dior Sauvage. I know a lot of people are, you know, throwing insults, uh, chucking insults left and right, but you know, even though, yes, it does fall within that line of your Blue de Chanel's and your Mr. Burberry's, but it still does things differently. And by far of those three fragrances that I just mentioned, Sauvage is the one that gets me the most amount of compliments. So in any case, super unique. Dior is one of my favorite houses. They have so much variety from Fahrenheit to Dior Um to Hypnotic Poison to Sauvage. I mean, they really know how to make, you know, the best of each world. And uh, I think this one is no exception. Uh, overall smell, incredibly pleasant, very different, unique, sensual, adventurous, mysterious, exotic. Um, but it's not a compliment getter. So just keep that in mind. Longevity, enormous. Projection, enormous. It's going to jump up off your skin well beyond an arm's length for many, many, many hours. Um, I couldn't even tally it. Uh, after a point, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I began to experience nose fatigue. So it's gonna last a long time. Be cautious with the sprayer, please. Um, I have almost gotten myself in trouble at that wedding. My wife was sitting right next to me and she goes, man, you sprayed a lot on yourself. And I'm like, no, not really. <laughs> but I did, you know, it's just a little goes a long way. And then versatility, not too good, not too good. Uh, listen, it, it's great for formal occasions if you're dressed up. You know, this isn't a fragrance that I would wear lounging around the house, even though earlier in my review, I said you could wear this lounging around the house. I mean, I think you should wear whatever you want whenever you want to, but with the price tag though, probably don't wanna waste it wearing it around the house. Nonetheless, I think this would work really well in the cold. Uh, it's just performed so monstrously that I wouldn't wear it in the dead of summer. Um, it's, yeah, it's asking for trouble. Um, I think in terms of price, uh, I think it's a little bit steep, but I think if you really like the smell, it's certainly an investment because it's gonna last you a long time. Anybody of any age can wear it. Um, I would probably lean a little bit more towards the mature side. Again, it has that youthfulness. It depends on how you carry yourself, right? And then lastly, I took a look at the presentation. I think the presentation is actually really nice. I love Dior Privé presentations. If I had to give this one an overall score, and I'm trying my hardest not to be subjective here, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. And this is a scent where personally, I would give it a five out of five. But when you take a look at the things like the compliment factor, which is not the highest, you take a look at things like the versatility, which is not the highest, it's hard for me to objectively give this one a five out of five but it's gonna sit very happily at a four out of five. That's a high score in my books. This fragrance deserves it. It's one of my favorite rose-based scents. If I ever do make a top 10 rose, and if you guys would like to see that, let me know, leave a comment down below. You can guarantee this is going to be in my top 
five. Uh, so anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. And uh, Julian from Notes Punch, thank you very much for tagging me. I really do appreciate it. And uh, guys, I mean, have you tried any fragrance from this company? Let me know, what do you think? Leave a comment down below. Is this your favorite, Dior Privé? Um, I know my favorite is Eau Noir, but <laughs> that's a story for a different time. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe for future videos, top tens, giveaways, unboxings, and a lot of other fragrance related content. So remember, I smell well so you can smell good. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care.